Hey, welcome to the Backwoods Gourmet. Today, we're going to do a dish in the Dutch oven straight off the cover of Southern Cast Iron. So y'all stay tuned. So yeah, I got this, uh, the latest version of Southern Cast Iron right there. I always pick these up when I see them. If I didn't have it yet, they're not cheap. These things are like uh, 15, 16 bucks uh, off the store shelf. And I see this dish on the front. I mean, uh, it's cooked in a cast iron skillet. It's called a blueberry buckle. Well, I got to reading the recipe, figured out, hey, you know, it's Memorial Day. We can make this a lot more patriotic. So what we're going to do is we're going to take and use their recipe as the basis. And uh, I'm going to call mine red, white, and blueberry bacon buckle. Yeah, I said bacon. Okay, the first thing we're going to make is the topping because this needs to go in the refrigerator. This is a strudel topping. I'm going to start with one half cup of all-purpose flour, a quarter cup finely packed light brown sugar, quarter cup of white sugar, quarter teaspoon of salt. Now I did call for salted butter at the end here. I didn't have it so I added a little, about an eighth of a teaspoon more salt. Uh, this is a half a cup of sliced almonds, some, uh, this is a uh, teaspoon of lime zest, you can also use uh, lemon, lemon zest, and then in goes, we had about, uh, I don't know, about two strips of crispy bacon bits, I made those this morning. Now I'm going to just uh, toss that all together real quick. Alright, so as soon as you get that uh, all put together, we're going to put in that's five tablespoons of melted butter. Just melted that in some cast iron over there. So go ahead and get that out. Mix it all together. It should all wet from the butter when you're done here. Yeah, it's kind of coming together nice and thick. All right, everything looks pretty incorporated there. Now we'll just, uh, we'll just cover this bowl and a sticker in the refrigerator. A little bit of stuck to the spoon there. Let's get that mixed in there. Stick her in the refrigerator and then we'll start getting ready to do the cake portion. So this our, uh, the item we're going to use to cook this off with is going to be our 10 inch shallow lodge Dutch oven. This is the shallow version. They make a deep version also. I uh, have both of these up on our Amazon store so if you can't find these uh, where you live, um, check out our Amazon store. We appreciate everybody that goes over there and uh, purchases something off that. It helps us to you know, buy ingredients and keep this channel going a little bit here. So 10 inch shallow lodge, uh, we already got our fire going. So we wanna go ahead and get this guy preheated before we start making the batter for the cake portion of this. It, it is time to go ahead and get our Dutch oven set up. Let's go ahead and pour our charcoals out about three quarters of a small chimney. Kingsford's there. Grab our tongs. Now today we are our own heat control. It's gonna bake 350. We're using the number 10 or a 10 inch oven. So we're gonna deduct three from the bottom number, from that number, uh, number 10, deduct three for the bottom heat. It's gonna give us seven for the bottom. We'll give us approximately 350 in the oven. I'm trying to get some that are just started up there. So that is seven. We're gonna space them out evenly. Go ahead and put our oven down on there. All right, now with some, we got a number 10, we're gonna to wanna to add three to the top. So that means we're gonna want 13. Let's go ahead and get them on there. And 
I always find that no matter what size your oven is, if you use that particular cold counting method, it's going to be one solid ring all the way around the rim. So the bigger the oven, the more we're going to have up there. Now, time to get our cake mix ready. Get to cooking. What we want to do also, before we put this to bed, give it a little spray on the inside. All right, so first thing we want to combine is we got four tablespoons of cold butter in a pan. And here we're going to add one cup of regular granulated sugar. This is a half cup measuring device. Go ahead and get two scoops of that. And what I'm going to do here today, just to save time and demonstration purposes, and probably if you're going to do it at the house, that's the way you're going to do it, we're going to go ahead and bring in our electric mixer. Now, if you're at camp, you can actually use a wooden spoon, kind of smish these into um, the butter and the, and the sugar together. But what we're going to do is go ahead and just to try to see if we can make a mess with this. Butter is pretty cold, and it's going to take a little while to chop it all up. Actually, I think I'm going to get my spoon, and we'll mash it first. So it really turns out that the uh, the mixer don't work at all. It just throws the chunks of cold butter around in the pan, or the pot, or the bowl, or whatever here. So we went and got our big wood spoon. So now we're just mashing, mashing it into the sugar. And the recipe says we want a sandy texture. The only way you're going to be able to mix that is if you got one, maybe one of them big KitchenAid jobs. It might break this cold butter down, but I don't know. I'm going to mash it in there first, get it started, and then we'll switch over to the mixer again. See what happens. Now that we've got that combined, we're going to go ahead and add one egg, one straight from our chickens there. Go ahead and put it on the mixer again. Start out easy. Again, you can do this completely manually, no problem, alright? So, I would do that here for you today, but I'm sure you don't want to sit there uh, and watch us uh, mix for 15 minutes. All right, now two extracts we're going to put in: uh, pure vanilla extract, one half a teaspoon, and then almond extract. If you don't have almond extract, just go ahead and use a teaspoon of vanilla. No problem with that. You're putting almonds on top, and it's done. All right, I'm going to go ahead and gently mix that in. So starting with our flour, we're going to go one and three quarters of a cup of flour. I just kind of eyeball it. All right, there you go. That's all-purpose flour. Two teaspoons of baking powder. Just level them off there. And hey, guys, this stuff is really cheap, like a buck sixty-nine or something. We're all ten of it. If yours is old, go ahead and pick up a here you go, fresh batch before you start in on making this dish so that you're not going to be disappointed later. Go ahead and put in our salt, so dry ingredients going down. And if you had the lemon zest instead of the lemon juice like we or lime juice like we have today, go ahead and put the zest in. But I'm going to mix that uh, lime juice into the wet after this gets wet, wet up a little bit. I'll now put it in. So we just whisk that together. And we're going to set it aside right back here where we can get to it. And then we're going to slowly incorporate it back into this bowl with our butter. We'll see how that goes. Let's 
is to also add some a little bit of your milk at a time. out lime juice rest of the milk that was uh, three quarters of a cup of milk by the way three quarters of a cup two tablespoons of lime juice or it'll be two teaspoons of lime zest if you have lime zest Obviously that lime zest is much stronger than the actual juice. So now we're going to take, um, we had a one cup each of cranberries and blueberries. So we divided those in half. So we're going to go ahead and put half of each into the batter. And we're just going to gently fold those in and make sure you get them, you know, your red and your blue sides evened up there and then it's going to be time to put this in the Dutch oven and we're going to save the other cup of both cranberry and blueberry for the, the end all right moment of truth here go ahead and get take our lid off over there on the floor one we'll go ahead and just pour that right into the pan It's hot enough here today, guys. We could probably just leave this out in the sun and it would bake. No coals needed. All right. Put all down in there. Let's go ahead and get that lid back on. Okay, so before we put it all the way to bed, give a little presentation and we'll go ahead and sprinkle some uh, some blueberries you don't have to get crazy with them I kind of picked the smaller ones I had too I mean some of these were giants some of these I actually grew myself right here in the backyard but some were really big I kind of picked those out and we got some cranberries that's gonna give us our red for our red white and blue it's a white cake mix red cranberries and blueberries and of course that topping's got bacon you can go wrong with that use most of the red we got just want to keep it festive you know kind of make it look pretty if you got any places missing blue go ahead and drop one that looks pretty awesome alrighty Go ahead and put our lid back on. Our bake time is about 50 minutes. Folks, just a couple minutes in here, so let's go ahead and sprinkle our topping right over the top. I just let that just get started. It's kind of firm up a little bit so this didn't this sits on the top and not sink down in the batter too much. And it's really cold. I had a hard time breaking it up again. Ready? Just throw the heat to her. So what we want to keep doing here about every 10 minutes, I want to give a quarter turn on that on that uh, lid. I think the bottom will be fine. But if you want, you can pick the whole thing up and turn it to um, keep your heat going at the bottom evenly. I think we're going to be all right in that bottom department, but. We may turn it about half, maybe once or twice from the bottom. But that lid is going to be something you got to keep an eye on because that cake is a lot closer to that lid. 
as it rises. Right, let's go ahead and take a look at her. It's been about 45 minutes. That's well, looking pretty good on top. Um, I'm liking it. Smelling done. Usually when it's smelling done, it's done. I already poked it with the skewer and the cake part's done. So uh, let's go ahead and we'll shake that lid off. We'll set it over here and let it cool for a little while. All right, guys, we're just going to go in here and just had a little chance to cool down now. We'll go in here and take our big spatula. Give us a nice slice. Get those almonds on top. You know this first one's always the hardest one to get out, right? So let's give it a try. Look at that. All right, well, there was the uh, picture on the cover of Southern Cast Iron. Uh, ours did not quite turn out that way on top. I would So I would suggest if you wanted some of these blueberries or berries showing on top, put some of them in that topping because our topping completely covered up all the berries. But it was really delicious. As you can see, um, half of it's already gone. Um, not going to you know, show us eating it here tonight, but... I thought it was a great recipe um, and that little bit of bacon in that topping oh my god oh my god right it just makes it bacon makes everything better right Thanks for watching the Backwoods Gourmet. If you like what we're doing, please smash that like button right down there. You can see a whole playlist of cast iron and Dutch up cooking. It's going to be right up there. And for another great Backwoods Gourmet video, it's going to be right up here. And please remember, Memorial Day is all about our fallen veterans. We pay homage to them here every Memorial Day, and I hope everybody else does too. Thanks for watching.